All right, hey everybody. Uh, I am Titan Reaver. And I'm Perry Love Whistle. And today we're going to be doing a review of the Larva X HD. Uh, so, first off, uh, it the Larva X HD is the newest micro in the from Happy Model, the replacement to the original Larva X. Um, and most important thing to me, uh, it is a 3D capable 2.5 inch micro with HD onboard DVR. Uh, it was very easy to use, it's cheap, and the parts were readily available, so it didn't take me long to fix things after I broke them. All right, a couple of things that I want to make sure to capture right in the beginning too. Specify HD onboard DVR. We're talking about 1080p at 60 frames per second. So nice, crisp 1080p footage at a usable 60 frames per second at less than $200. So. Which is wild. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to give a shout out to Race Day Quads, where I order all of my stuff. Hashtag not sponsored. Please sponsor me. But... Uh, <laughs> Hashtag not smart. So, uh, I've managed to break a lot of things in my short career here as a, a FPV amateur, and they always have me parts within about a week or less to repair things. All right. So, uh, so we'll go over the things that you get when you buy the the Larva X HD. Uh, now, there's a lot of much more detailed reviews on this. Uh, you can see those at Drone Camps RC as a good one, um, and, and they're all great. Uh, but so what we're going to really talk about is what it means for people who are not professionals and are just getting into this. Uh, so you get the quad itself. So you get it. It comes like this uh, with this sort of sloped back extended canopy. Um, it has the Cadex Baby Turtle uh, on board. That's where the DVR comes from. A 200... 25 to 200 milliwatts switchable VTX, uh, and then the Happy Model 4-in-1 ESC that's even put on all their little micros. Um, and then I got it with the FR Sky or Free Sky, whatever, uh, XM Plus receiver, uh, but it comes with options where you can get the, um, for Fly Sky receivers, DSMX, and the other Free Sky option whatever that is. Um, and it comes in a very nice carrying case, uh, which I just happen to like. Uh, that does a, a decent job of protecting all of your components while it's in there. Um, one thing about the foam that it just kind of bothered me is when I switch to tribulated props, you can't fit it in the case anymore. So you have to take them off every time. Where if you keep the by blades that come on it, they can be turned to fit in here. Uh, and then in addition to that, you get two tattoo line, uh, 450 milliamp hour 3S LiPo batteries. Um, so right out of the, so everything you need out of the box, you can bind it up and fly it. Um, and I'm sure it would work well, uh, but because I venture to do everything 3D, I did not do that. So the first day that I got it, I hooked it up and I was able, uh, connected to BL Heli, switched all the motors to bi-directional uh, use, and then connected it to Betaflight. And I, I've noticed that the stock tunes, to me, that come on these micros that I've been flying, uh, the rates are a little high for my liking. Uh, so I did lower all three of the y'all pitch and roll rates um, to 525 each. So quite a bit lower than what they were. I want to point out that one of the main reasons for this review, there's already a couple of reviews, like he said, really good reviews out there for this. We are both amateurs though, and uh, if, you have, if you're thinking about getting this and you're an amateur and you're worried about things like ease of use, durability, stuff like that, that's specifically what we're talking about, and there is, uh, I can't recommend this enough as far as all of those things go, because you can watch, we've already both posted video footage with this, it's a lot of fun to fly, we're going to probably post more soon, um, and we, I, wreck it. 
Uh, <laughs> that's true. Uh, well, this is, so this, the first thing we'll talk about is durability. Uh, and the first remark that I'll make to the durability uh, is actually in terms of the prop guards that come with it for if you want to turn it into a whoop style, 2.5 inch whoop. Uh, and as you can see, this one is broken quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair to this prop guard, it was wrecked several times at relatively high speeds into very hard objects before they broke. So they did a very good job of preventing the rest of the quad from breaking while they were on. And they definitely guarded the props. <laughs> they definitely the, did do that. The props uh, were in really good shape, even as the uh, prop guards just utterly shattered. Also, uh, unlike a lot of whoops or whoop style, the prop guard is not a part of the frame. So prop guards broke and were useless, so we just took them off. Uh, of note, if you have the original Larva X uh, and you want the Larva X HD, uh, the prop guards will fit on the original Larva X frame with a bit of finagling uh, in the way the stack is arranged. And actually the picture, the background picture of my channel, that's the thing that you see sitting there, is the original Larva X with the prop guards on it. And I found that setup to be super manageable um, and really nice to fly. Um, so for if you wanted a little whoop and would probably be even better if you were to use either one of these things indoors, which I don't really recommend either, at least not at my skill level, I still break them regularly. Uh, but at least so the prop guards are not part of the frame, so they're easy to replace. The frame itself, uh, there's again been a lot of reviews and a lot of people saying that they're worried about the durability of the frame. Uh, and I'll show some footage here of me wrecking it regularly. <laughs> Just uh, smashing that thing. Like, uh, first, first three seconds of my flight, straight into a tree. Into the Dodged tree. my face, but then right important. into a tree. Um, so so I, I think that the frame is relatively durable uh, for what it is. It's not a very high mass quad. So, and with the bi-bladed props that it comes with, it is rel it's pretty manageable in the speed, but one thing that actually uh, um, Perry said to me while we were flying is that I seemed a lot more confident while doing it, which we'll get to in the flight characteristics, and I did, overly confident, and I broke it. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was $8 to get a new frame, uh, so I had one of those. I ordered, chip, ordered it from Race Day Quads and had it here in a few days. Um, and then that night, I fixed it. So I took all everything off, put the new, put it on the new frame, um, which led to me being doing dumbs. Uh, so one thing to note about this is that the four and one ESC and flight controller is not centered on the frame. So it is, comes 45 degrees offset on the yaw axes. Uh, and when I put it back together, I put it 225 degrees off of zero, which led to bad performance. <laughs> and a little bit of infield repairs required. Um, but I, what I think is important to illustrate here is I'm not an expert in any way. Uh, and I was still able to buy the frame for $8, put all the electronics on it. I watched a single video on how to correct uh, alignment of the flight controller, and then it was back in the air. So, which that video is linked in the video where I show that mistake happening. Uh, thanks, Joshua Bardwell. Um, <laughs> When in doubt, odds are there's a Joshua Bardwell video explaining exactly what your problem is. Yeah. Which have been numerous. <laughs> to reiterate. Um, so overall in durability, I don't know that I know enough to give, you know, like an out of five rating or anything like that. 
there's more important people giving those numbers out. I would just say it's good for what it is. Two two amateurs uh, ripped through twelve packs, wrecking it numerous times, and at the end of the day, it was still flying. So, yeah. still still flying well and clean. I mean, the prop guards were gone, but that's true. Yeah. Uh, we did have one time during a flight where the one or two of the screws uh, that were on the motor mounts had backed out. Um, that's probably due to me not tightening it down enough. Yeah, so if you're if you're a newbie like us, uh, I, I've actually had issues with that with my trash can too. Just I, and a lot a lot of people make offhand comments about this. I know a lot of the pros do it, but don't talk about it. Before you fly, just take a screwdriver or a hex key, whatever it is, and just tighten all sixteen of them. And take sixteen. Boop, boop, that's it. Because uh, we've both lost screws. I mean, the, the thing is vibrating all over the place while it's flying. So the screws, if they're not tight, they would just come out and they're gone. Yeah, yeah. that was it. And it, unfortunately, because one of the better moments of the flight, I thought, was ruined just by how much it was uh, shaking, mm -hmm. twerking in the air, is what I wanted to say. Uh, so overall, ease of use, I think it's great. Um, I had an, an easy time setting it up for 3D uh, as, you know, between using BL Heli and Betaflight, that's been pretty simple uh, after the, a couple of times. So no complaints there. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is the flight characteristics. Uh, I think it's, it flies very smooth. That's very easy to control. Uh, if you leave again with the with the props that come with it, the biblade props that come with it, these things. Uh, so they are 2.5 inch uh, press on props with a 1.5 millimeter uh, shaft, which is not super clear, depending on your ability to read web pages and product descriptions. Uh, like the, again, the race day quads page has all that information or you just have to scroll down far enough. Um, I think that it is super easy to control even in pretty tight areas. Uh, when I switched to the, these are HQ uh, tri-bladed props, again, it's still 2.5 inches. Um, it did move faster and as you would imagine with tri-bladed props, did corner better. Um, but it, I thought it, it lost a little resolution on the controlling the low end. Um, that was just my experience with it. Uh, and as for 3d usage, um, honestly, neither prop is perfect. Great. And they work. They work just fine for, uh, inverted flight. And I'm still trying to find a prop. A 2.5 inch prop that I think would work better um, but these have all worked and they go to show that you don't really need special props you know you just won't be quite as good when you're inverted uh, but like I mentioned before the since the flight characteristics do let you feel like you're locked in you will feel very confident while you're flying which I found really refreshing because you know we're both pretty new and uh, when you are struggling to fly uh, it starts to get a bit um, demoralizing after a little while. Like anything that takes practice, the beginning of it is difficult. And especially when you feel like you're doing really well in the sim, and even practicing for weeks or months, and I've put lots of hours into the sim, and you feel like you can do it, and then you get the real thing, and you can't, uh, or you barely can, uh, it's hard, but I thought that this thing just lets you feel like you knew like all of the responses that you'd expect happened when you uh, Y'all you it went the amount that you expected it to um, it It does not handle High winds all that well <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing uh, I, all, all the big reviews we we read talked about how it's how it works just fine in high winds, just like a five-inch quad is what they all say, and and I find that really hard to believe. Yeah, I, that 
I think in the hands of a really experienced pilot, it's next to negligible. You right. can compensate for it. Right. And... But you definitely feel it. Maybe, and like I said, maybe it's just because we're just coming out of the sim into real life. That's and, true. you know, when you, when you first step out, things like the wind and yeah. you know, breaking props. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Those all become a, a, a reality that are... But remember that this all up weight is still. I'll edit this. I don't know how many grams. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, we're gonna. We'll, we'll cut away and we'll have a shot of a close up shot of the scale. We'll, okay. use the, we'll use the scale on this. That's the batter, the weight of the car without the battery. We add the battery. Uh, Hundred and six grams. And Even it, with the weight of an orange, it's still less than 250 grams. Uh, <laughs> and so it's a, a lot lighter than your big 5-inch quads are. Um, notably, it is significantly less than 250 grams, which is very important because regardless of what happens in the coming future with this remote ID and the world ending, uh, the world's not going to end, and you can keep flying this and get that 1080p 60 frame per second video perfectly fine. Yeah. So, so in the, I mean, first of all, if this video does come out before the window closes, which I think is at the end of February, February or March, yeah, yeah February, February or March. So, if the window to comment on the drone ID legislation is still open, do go comment. I, I don't, I don't think, I'm probably gonna wait until afterwards to do my, the sky isn't falling video. Yeah. Just because I don't want to discourage anyone from commenting because I still think that commenting is really important. Yes. The FAA needs to know uh, that there are a lot of people, a lot of just hobbyists who are affected by their decisions. But, even if the drone ID legislation goes through as it is currently written, the Larva XHD is still 100% flyable legal to use in Class G airspace. So, <laughs> nothing to complain about. Um, Alright, and lastly, the performance characteristics of the receiver and the VTX. Um, so like I said, I got the XM Plus receiver option, um, and I have tried a few different directions for mounting the uh, antennas that are on it um, to get them 90 degrees off from each other in their um, radiation directions. Uh, and I've had no problems with it. Uh, it um, it flies as far as I would want to, uh, knowing that if it does not come back, I have to go pick it up, and which has happened. But um, I, I, I feel like the receiver is great. Um, I've been using the Tyrannus QX7, just you know, as it is, no modifications to either one of these things. Um, well, I, I guess it is slightly modified in that all both of my sticks are centered sprung. So. Thank you. Okay, just one more. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Okay, and uh, <laughs> and and I, I really liked it. Um, the before I was flying with the Fly Sky option on the original Larva X, still have no complaints towards Fly Sky and that receiver. But I had already bought that thing, so I wanted to use it. And so I bought the Free Sky version of this. Uh, depending, I might also get the Fly Sky if I decide to buy the Paladin, but I haven't done that. Um, the VTX on it, so uh, switching to 25 and 200 milliwatts, it does come at the 200 milliwatt setting normally. So depending on where you are, you might have to lower that. Um, legally. Uh, but I was, so I've been flying it at 200 milliwatts, uh, and I've been using just my, uh, sky zone O2 C's. Let's forget the letter combination. And I flew it 
with two different combinations of antenna. So I had the Lumineer, uh, like long Pagoda, and uh, oh, who made this one? This helical antenna by some company. Um, <laughs> and with the Almway, Almway, Almways, uh, their 10 dBi patch and cloverleaf antenna. I think it's 10 dBi. It doesn't really matter. It, um, this, and everyone knows it. Right? Everyone this knows is, this. Big this is like your standard beginner setup, right? It comes with the Almway goggles. Yeah. You got a non directional and a directional. So, um, and I found them both to be just fine. Uh, there were, it, it did seem oddly like this setup worked better in one of the locations, and this setup worked better in the other location where we flew. So if you if you know anything ab about that, because there was one, there was a period of time where he was flying, and I was wearing these, and he was wearing those, and he was flying and completely lost visual. I did not. Um, maybe you can r roll a shot of that because it's a very memorable part of the flight right here. So if you have any idea why in that setup a helical and an omni would have lost. Notably, I'm pretty sure we were pointing, we were facing in similar directions, because I would know that, you know, that obviously affects the direction of the, you know, when you're using a directional yeah. antenna. Uh, I don't know. Um, and I don't know why one would work better in one place than another. Yeah. So if you yeah. know, leave a comment. Uh, a, educate us. We don't know a whole lot about radio transmissions. Just enough. Just to enough. Be, to, <laughs> yeah. For basic radio stuff. Uh, yeah, and he was... The other difference between our two setups is he was using his Almway commanders. So uh, the receivers are slightly different than what's in mine. Yeah, so it may have been a matter of uh, the different way of programming the... Diversity. The diversity. Yeah. Yeah, the different ways of programming the diversity. So that information is not easily available. Uh, um... And so I, I think that's mostly it. Uh -huh. I'd say uh, quick synopsis. If you're if you don't own a quad yet, and you're thinking about getting one, uh, and you're scared either of the cost, worried about breaking stuff, worried about drone ID, because everyone's freaking out about that right now, um, I would say the Larva X HD is just, yeah, it's great. It's just it's pretty great. And if you are thinking about getting into quads. And you've got the money, I'd say probably the best setup for a beginner would be to get both the Larva X and the Larva X HD. Put the prop guards on the Larva X and use it for indoor stuff only. On 2S. On 2S. And then prop guards off on the X HD on 3S outdoors. Uh, I mean, obviously that'd be a way more expensive setup and you could probably get get better performance for lower cost than that. But out of what we've got here, I think that that would, uh, that would make you happy for a long time. And it's, it's honestly hard to describe how happy I was the first time that I saw the DVR recording. Because before that, I had been using, uh, well, failing to use the DVR on this, but uh, using mostly the, the DVR from my goggle feed. For all of my flight footage that I was reviewing and posting, but mostly reviewing to see what I did wrong. Uh, and then when you just review your own flight footage and you see that 1080p at 60 frames per second, it just feels better. Uh, you feel good about what you did. You can clearly see all the times you made a mistake. Um, and I, and it, it's a lot of fun. Oh, one, I, that's one thing. Setting up... I forgot in ease of use. The OSD was super easy to set up. And this has all of the telemetry information that you could ever want. Um, so I, I like to overlay, have my stick overlays in the uh, OSD and false horizon and a bunch of other data because I like looking at in numbers and things. And um, I found that to be really easy to set up and it all worked very well. Well, that's all. So, uh, if you enjoyed this and you'd like more product reviews or anything, if you have any suggestions on what we sh 
should upload, uh, put it in the comments below. Uh, if you have any critiques, put them in the comments below. Uh, and anything else, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, and you know. You know what to do. Hit the bell. Hit <laughs> 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 the bell. <laughs>